All right, guys, in this video, I am going to take on the sting of the fireworm so I can officially rate it on the Brave Wilderness Bite Sting Index. Now, the sting from this venomous worm is horrible. We're talking searing pain, massive swelling, and even long-term skin damage. So for me, this is gonna be a really bad day. But before I can go through this test, I first have to catch one. And the only way to do that is to get out in the water. Parts of this video are sponsored by My Singing Monsters. We're diving today just off a public beach near Miami, Florida. And if you can believe it, the waters just off these beaches are swarming with fireworms. Fireworms can grow up to a foot in length and are covered in thousands of venom lace bristles, which has earned them the reputation of being one of the worst stings in the entire ocean. And unfortunately for me, I'm going to experience this firsthand. That is, if I'm able to find one. I've seen something in the rocks just ahead. Oh, check that out. Our first spot of the day, that is a moray eel. Moray eels are incredibly territorial and can be aggressive toward divers. So if I want to keep all my fingers, I better also keep my distance. Now these reefs are a promising environment, but still no fireworm. There is a ton of light down here, however, so I have a feeling it's just a matter of time. I think we need to dive deeper. All right, yes. This is looking perfect. What we're looking at here in front of us is a muck bottom environment, which the fireworms love. And you see that orange sponge? That's a fantastic sign. I've seen fireworms covering these sponges many dives before. Okay, I'm seeing something wormy just up ahead. Oh yeah, there it is. The first fireworm of the day and a decent sized one too. Whoa, did you see that? the fireworm is flaring out its spines in self-defense, which is gonna make them even more tricky to catch. Even with these gloves on, this is a very dangerous operation that should never be attempted. Please never do this. Taking a sting from a fireworm underwater could easily put you in a life-threatening situation. We have a bit more time left in our tank. Let's see if we can find a few more. Wow, almost immediately we've got another one. Once you find the fireworms, they are nearly everywhere you look. Let's see just how many we can get. Now for anyone wondering, rest assured, we will be returning all of these fireworms right back where I found them at the end of this video. Wow, that one is an absolute monster. I'm not even sure it's going to fit in this container. Let's try. All right, well, I think we found today's co-star. It's time to take our worms to the surface and for me to face the flame of the fireworm. Since it's important that I return the worms back to the water as quickly as possible, there was no time to waste. So I ditched my scuba gear and got right to setting up for the sting test. The sting table is set. I'm gonna get out a few things that we're gonna be using for today's experiment with the fireworm. I've got a Petri dish, we're gonna place them in. Some clear Gorilla tape. You might be asking, Mark, what are you gonna do with that? you'll see in just a few minutes. I've got some white vinegar. Gonna need that for the afterburn. And then of course, this is for me. Just a little hydration out here on the beach. I never leave home without my Summit Adventure Fuel. Now I'm gonna keep the rest of the worms covered. We don't need all the worms we found. Of course, we found a lot of worms. There were hundreds of fireworms at this site. The last one that we found, I even had a hard time fitting it inside the jar that I took with me. So I think that's the one we're gonna use for the experiment because I am curious, does size matter when it comes to the sting of a fireworm? I think today we'll find out. Let's get some seawater in our Petri dish. Nice, clean, and cold. Now time to get out the fireworm. Whoa. Oh yeah. All right, here's second worm going in. Get some of these spines out of there. Check that out. You know what, Mark? That looks just like a fleech worm. Fleech worm? Is that a real thing? No, it's from a video game. My Singing Monsters. These are in a video game? Yeah. No way. It looks just like... Hold on, let me see. Whoa! Right? You know, if you were to make a cartoon of a fireworm, the rare fleech worm from My Singing Monsters. I've never even heard of My Singing Monsters. Do you play? Yeah, it's a great game. And what do they do? They sing. 
they sing? Yeah. All right, so the rare fleech worm, probably modeled after a fireworm, clearly, I mean, look at it, its face is on fire. This monster actually sings. So after these fireworms are done making me sing, maybe we'll, we'll check that out at the end of the video, but there you have it, wow. The rare fleech worm from My Singing Monsters. So as you can see, these worms are absolutely covered in thousands of these very small but very sharp venomous spines. Now these spines are constantly growing. So you'll see there's some of them floating around and it really does look like fiberglass. When you look at it under a microscope, you could see just how sharp the points of the spines really are. So really just even a subtle brush into one of these creatures is gonna land you in a world of pain right where I'm about to be here in just a few more minutes. But you can also see that red coloration is where they get their name, the fireworm, because they look like they're on fire and they certainly feel like it when they touch your skin. Now, a lot of people do come into contact with these worms, namely scuba divers and snorkelers, but you do need to be careful if you're out here swimming. If you're walking along and you feel rocks below your feet, there's a good chance that could be the home of a fireworm. If you step on one of these, it's gonna light you up. Wow, and there we go. Come in tight, let's see that right there. That, to me, is the most impressive thing about the fireworm, besides what the venom can do, is this amazing flaring defense. They can just splay and spread out all of those spines so they can encase their entire body. All of that middle bit there, it's no different than your average worm. In fact, when I squeeze it with these tweezers, they're super soft, they're squishy. And if they weren't covered in these amazingly painful spikes, they would be easy pickings for anything that lives out there in the ocean. So now you've heard me mention more than a few times that these worms are venomous. So while yes, those spines will jam into your flesh like a cactus, uh, they release a toxin. Um, there's a mucus that these worms are coating those spines in much like a lionfish or a stonefish. And when that toxin gets into the skin, it's gonna cause instant searing pain. And that pain will continue to cycle through as long as those spines are lodged in my skin. And then after that, I'm gonna inevitably deal with tremendous swelling and probably some scarring. This is one of the stings that it's gonna leave lasting damage. Luckily for me, I get stung a lot in this area for the bite sting index. So it's just gonna be one of many scars. It's time to take a sting from this very bizarre marine creature so I can officially rate it on the Brave Wilderness Bite Sting Index. And this is one of the animals that I have been really curious to rate since we invented the Bite Sting Index for Brave Wilderness, where we rate the sting or bite of an animal in three different factors, intimidation, pain, and aftermath. And for this worm, the aftermath is what you're definitely going to want to stick around for because not only will you see just how bad the burn from a fireworm can be, but I'm gonna show you what to do if you are ever stung by one of these venomous creatures. Ugh. Ugh, I know how bad this is gonna be. Time to find out. What does the burn of the fireworm do to human flesh? On three, ready? One. Two, three. Hold on, I didn't give me good enough. Maybe one more time, one more time. Here we go. Puff up, puff up. One, two, three. Ah, yeah, the birds. Ah. Ah. Oh, oh, it's so, oh, it's so. Ah. Oh, do you see all those spines? Oh my gosh. Ah. Ah. Oh, you can already see it's turning red. Oh, I got stung really bad. That's so many spines. Hundreds. I got stung by hundreds. Ah. Oh, it's so bad. Ah. Ah. Okay. Ah. Oh, God. Are you okay? Oh, it's bad, dude. It's really bad. Hold on. Ah. 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 Ah.
Oh my gosh, it's so much worse the first time. I've been stung by these before, but never one that big. I have so many spines in my arm right now. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is gonna be my worst sting ever. This is gonna be my worst sting. Ah! Ah! I gotta let it dry. Because once it dries, I can use this tape to remove the spines. Anything that's like super adhesive. If you don't have duct tape, find something sticky. Just like get that stuff out of there. You need to get those spines out of your skin because right now I can just feel the venom just rah, just like lava flowing over top of itself. It's just as bad as a bullet ant. It's just as bad as a bullet ant. It, it could be worse. <laughs> Ha! Ah, don't blow on it. Makes it worse. Oh, come on. Dry. Dry. Ah! All right, I'm gonna walk it off. Hang on, guys. I'm just gonna walk around for a second. Ah. 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 Okay, it's dry. It's dry. All right, I've taken all I can take. I gotta get these out. All right, piece of tape like that. Any tape will do, but I got this so you can see just how many spines I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna try to do this in one, one swoop. Here we go. You wanna cover the entire area. Wow, oh, wow. I didn't get a moment to go again, but look at that. Look at how many spines are in there. Mm. Okay, holy mackerel. Look at those welts coming in. You see that? Oh my gosh, and they don't even look that bad compared to how it feels. Instantly better as soon as you remove the spines. It really makes a big difference. The next thing you wanna do, white vinegar. It's gonna help neutralize the burns. Oh, oh yeah. Whatever toxin is left on top of my skin, this vinegar is going to neutralize it. Heavy duty tape, white vinegar. If you don't have it with you, get it as fast as you can because the faster you can get those spines out of your skin, the sooner you're gonna be on the road to recovery. But I can tell you the road to recovery for this thing is long. And you can see how much the welts are rising. Tomorrow, this is gonna be nasty. But before we get into the BSI rating, I'm gonna to try to distract myself and have a little bit of fun. I wanna know what the rare fleech worm from my singing monster sounds like. Does it sound anything like this? That was me, right? We just rolled that back. Checking it out on YouTube, we got rare fleech worm. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Hold on, I gotta hear that one more time. Yeah, all right. Uh, doesn't sound like what I expected to sound like. I expected to sound like how I sounded when I got burned by the fireworm. Maybe, uh, Asa, maybe we should send my audio track to the folks at My Singing Monsters and they can. All right, anyway, now comes the, the hard part, the healing process, the aftermath. And uh, the pain score, gonna be high. Intimidation, I'm gonna have to think about that. Aftermath? I'm gonna have a long time to think about that because the aftermath of this worm is gonna last for weeks. But you don't have to wait weeks. Let's get into it right now and officially rate the fireworm on the Brave Wilderness Bite Sting Index. On intimidation, the fireworm looks intense. The bright red skin combined with thousands of spine remind me of a venomous snake. Plus, having taken a sting before, I know just how easily those spines can get stuck in your skin. And when you see a big one underwater, they are majorly intimidating. So for that, I give it a 7.8 out of 10. For pain, once those spines dug in and started to dose me with venom, the burn was intense. The feeling was similar to being burned and electrocuted over and over again. And unlike my first sting, I got completely nailed this time with at least five times the amount of bristles. Needless to say, it hurt badly. And for that, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. 
The aftermath of the fireworm is where it scores some serious points. Its burn just kept going and going, day after day and week after week, and the rash would come back with a vengeance, leaving behind these intense, itching pustules and swelling. Anytime I would get active or start to sweat, the pain would come rushing back, and to this day, there is still some scarring left behind from the burn of this firework. So for this, I give the aftermath score a whopping 9.6 out of 10. All combined, the fireworm ranks at a nine on the Brave Wilderness BSI, which is a major score for a majorly painful creature.